Seventh episode. In the bathroom. The fact that Ambrosius Lemma trusted Sabia so much amazed and pleased her at the same time. She really had a trustworthy charisma with her open look and the face that looked like a copy of her beloved grandmother Marion. But not only Sabia looked like her grandmother, but also like her mother Sinner. Three generations, three wonderful, amazing women whose eyes sparkled with life. Lemma disappeared into the bedroom and reappeared a short time later in an outfit that took Sabia's breath away. Elegant low shoes made of dark leather. Black, well-fitting corduroy trousers. A lime green flannel shirt that looked great on his face. In his underground apartment he appeared rather insecure towards Sabia, which only increased her obvious sympathy for him. He would be leaving the apartment in a few minutes. And then? Sabia calmly settled into the sushi meal and poured herself a cola. Bye until later. Have a good time, she heard Ambrosius Lemma as if from afar. Then he was gone. Sabia took a deep breath. What would await her here in the next few hours? Startling findings? Claustrophobia? An intimate hour with Ambrosius Lemma? A clarification of the confusing story? Then she saw with her own eyes what Ambrosius Lemma had already told her, there was bright, crystal clear water above her. Now she understood where the light came from. Lake Bulwell. Sabia threw her head back and stared upwards. A domed glass canopy stretched far above her. This glass glowed eerily, and above it was the lake. It had to be the lake. Damn, Sabia said to herself. She loved and hated this scary body of water because her beloved grandmother had drowned in it. Sabia climbed a spiral stone staircase. The apartment wound up to an upper floor, almost like the inside of a snail shell. From there she wanted to get a better look at the mysterious light. She thought hard. Sabia had many talents. One of them was her unerring sense of direction. She knew exactly where she had come from, where her house was and at what height the underground laboratory and experimental rooms were. It was actually on the line between Martinus Farm, Lake Bulwell and the Elfenberg Nursing and Retirement Center at the other end. The monastery was located at an acute angle towards the lake, the area under which she now stood, which took up almost the entire ceiling, was huge. She briefly remembered her physics class. Pressure equals force per area. The larger the area, the less force was needed to act on it. That's why this roof didn't collapse. The pressure was spread over over 200 square meters. Part of the catacombs ran under the lake. Then, and this was probably the result of Ambrosius Lemma's ambition, this huge plate of special armored glass was pulled in without giving in to the pressure of the water. But woe betide anyone who injured the glass surface with a pistol shot, for example. Within seconds the catacombs would be filled with water and it would be too late for anyone who wanted to leave Ambrosius Lemma's crypt. Immediately too late and much too late. Sabia narrowed her eyes and was reassured to see that the structure above her was extremely stable. In any case, she no longer perceived the light as ghostly, but rather as extremely warm, mild and mysterious. The technical effort behind it was worth it. Sabia's mood noticeably improved. Nothing had happened to her so far. Quite the opposite, Ambrosius Lemma had offered her accommodation for free and enabled her to temporarily say goodbye to her rat-infested house. She went back downstairs, rummaged through her rolling suitcase, took out a pair of panties with blue polka dots on them, grey trainer pants, and an emerald green tank top, and entered the bathroom. This place also amazed her. The floor, walls, tub and ceiling were made of brilliant white marble, illuminated indirectly by a golden light. Sabia could have spent hours in the gigantic bathtub. Perhaps with some music. Wrapped in honey-scented bath foam. She, who was used to a more modest life, felt a certain affinity for luxury. She thought back and forth between the bath and the shower. Then she decided. It had to be a bath. Here and now. She let the water bubble and was happy about the bath towels that had been carefully laid out for her. How attentive this Ambrosius Lemma was, almost as if he had a bad conscience towards her, she thought about what it would be like. With him. In that fragrant tub. But then she pushed the thought aside and took off her clothes. She filled a small container with a flower-scented bath product, which immediately began to foam, and then she placed her left foot on the surface of the water. A shiver of delight swept over her. Ambrosius Lemma was at a meeting that could last well into the night, and she was here, safe in this fresh-looking bathing hall, 
and was able to have a good time. Have a good time. His words in her ear. It wasn't until Sabia was sitting in the bubble bath that she discovered a display where she could choose music. A little later, subtle Andrea's Folaveda harp sounds trickled out of invisible speakers. Caverna Magica. Then she spotted the glittering gold metal handle embedded in the marble wall. Curious, she pulled on it. And was faced with a selection of exquisite delicacies. With a deep sigh, she fumbled with a bottle of Prosecco, sorted salmon rolls onto a plate and poured herself a glass. She pulled a stand out of the refrigerator compartment that had small air-filled cushions on the bottom. A floating table all for her. How beautiful life could be. Sabia lounged in the bath foam and let the time trickle past her. Then she discovered the two foot-shaped recesses in the spacious tub. Sabia carefully pushed her feet in. She heard a deep hum and felt a slight pressure on the soles of her feet. Years ago she had taken a course in foot reflexology, but all she could remember was that the toes reflected the head and neck, the midfoot reflected the chest, and the ankles and heels reflected the stomach and pelvis. She closed her eyes and gave in to the pulsating massage. Sabia sank into a kind of trance and only woke up when the music stopped. Andreas Folaveda had plucked his last harmony.